can blockchain fight corruption in Kenya? Yes, the accountability, yeah. the transparency. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at these challenges, I think technology has huge potential too. Okay, um, hi everyone, I'm Lena. Um, I'm originally from Germany, but I do study in Denmark, in Copenhagen. In, um, and I do innovation and entrepreneurship. And I'm here in Kenya with the founders of Tomorrow, which is an awesome uh, impact and tech competition um, happening once a year in Copenhagen. And it's all about new technology, um, creating innovation for the futures and tackling um, the SDGs, basically. So, and uh, last year I was the winner of Founders of Tomorrow and that's why um, they sent me to explore, um, as we call it, Silicon Savannah. Okay. I heard it's a bit controversial, this term. <laughs> yeah. And my aim was basically to, um, to look into business models um, in startups who use technology in order to create um, a positive impact in terms of social and environmental. And I was very interested in the agriculture sector and in the waste management sector. So I tried to focus on startups that are tackling issues in these um, areas. We're going to start painting. Okay, okay, so I have to... Yeah. So I can just paint anything? You can paint anything. I can be very creative here. Um, almost six weeks ago. Almost six weeks. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I've been living here. <laughs> All right. Kenya, Kenya has a way of making you feel in a place. <laughs> yeah. I think I've visited around 30. For example, uh, Sunnyvation, they yeah. have nothing to do with technology, but they're very interesting. What is Sunnyvation? <laughs> I don't know what Sunnyvation is. <laughs> who, who is Sunnyvation? So Sunnyvation is Sanitation Plus Innovation. And they are, they designed toilets, very smart toilets, because the toilets separate liquid from, from or like, like from white, well, kind of. they separate urine and yeah. poo. Yeah. Yeah, wow. and they sell these toilets to slums or refugee camps where people don't have access to sanitation or there is just a one community toilet. And um, yeah, so that's the first thing they tackle. Then they collect the poo and then they bring it to their, their factory yeah. and then out of the poo they make charcoal. And, wow, then they, okay. and then they sell the charcoal. So that's the business model. I once yeah, very interested doing something similar to that. They're called Sanogy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're doing something similar, yeah. Something yeah. similar, but now they, they were making fertilizer out of that yeah. instead of uh, briquettes. Surprisingly, it doesn't smell. You don't... Why does it not smell? I don't know. They do okay. something to it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine if I'm going to the field today and they're going to deal with urine and uh, human feces yeah. the whole day, you're gonna need a mask. You know the mask yeah, that yeah, you yeah, see yeah. from sci-fi films. Yeah. Yes, you're gonna make that. No, actually, it was fine. Yeah, surprisingly. Where are you in Navasha. Which other one did you visit? I really loved Sophie Bot. Have you heard of them? No. So they're not. working with AI, and um, artificial intelligence. Yeah, artificial intelligence. Right. Yeah. So um, the founder of Sophie Bot heard of of a story from Sophie who yeah. dropped out because she um, she was pregnant. Yeah. And he created this artificial intelligent bot community system, uh, communication system. Okay. So girls and boys can ask questions to this machine through oh, Facebook, for example. Yeah. If they have questions like, I don't know, um, how can I? When can I get pregnant? Yeah, how can I get pregnant? Um, yeah, well, I don't know what kind of question. If I and use then, a condom, can yeah, I how can pregnant? I use or where can I buy condoms or how can I protect? Um, yeah. And um, oh, it's wow. very interesting because there's no person sitting behind this, this uh, communication tool. So I don't know what to say. No, I understand. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the age where I read somewhere that artificial intelligence is going to take over almost all communication. Mm -hmm. And currently Safaricom has one. I know one, the one that is called Zuri. Zuri? Yeah, it's called Zuri. <laughs> Now, this is the second... Siri piece. and Zuri. Yes. Siri, the yeah. Apple Siri. Okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the second time I'm hearing it. Really nice. Yeah. Really nice. And I mean, it's interesting it's what you... Sophie Bot. Sophie Bot. Bot. Yeah. yeah. For Robert, but now Bot. Sophie Bot. Yeah, yeah. And Robert. it's targeting teenagers or it's targeting school-going girls and boys. Yeah. Girls and boys, which is also interesting. Not just girls, but yeah. also boys. Yeah. Because and they don't... Yeah. Yeah. And it's meant to educate this younger group about sexual... Health. 
Yeah. Should probably interview them. Yeah, you should interview them. <laughs> He's very color. interesting. What do you I need? can't find this color. This one is this here, no? No, that's oh. a different one. Okay. Because I want it to matchy matchy. Oh, she looks nice. She has <laughs> leaves. Lisa leaves, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm you glad you can recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yours is very obvious. You're pretty good at this. <laughs> Okay, I think now I'm gonna have to change the color. Okay, tell me about another. Another one? Another, yeah, another. Okay, what else do I have? Um, I really liked. Who else? Twigger Foods is very interesting as well. Yeah, you know them. I know them, but yeah. I haven't interviewed them. So they're working with farmers, with small scale farmers, and tackling the issue of market access and a stable income. So what small farmers struggle mostly from not being connected to the to the market, not being able to sell their products for a fair price. So um, what Trigger Foods does, they, they go to farmers and they see what quality their, 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 their vegetables or fruits are and they help them to create a, a very good quality, quality food. Mm -hmm. And then they buy off almost everything and they mobile pay them right away. And then they connect the farmers right away with the storeholders, which is a huge issue I learned in Kenya because there are many brokers in between. So the prices become very high and it takes a long time until the product actually reaches the, the, um, the storeholders. Yeah. And the storeholders are mainly women, um, I learned, yeah. and they have to get up, it's crazy, at four or three in the morning to go to the big markets in order to get the good products from the brokers. Yeah. And then they, they are still not sure if they will actually get anything and be able to sell anything during the day. Yeah, yeah so with Trigger Foods, they can be, again, they can be sure that Trigger Foods going to come every day and they're going to deliver them with quality food, um, which is actually cheaper than what the brokers would offer them. Yeah. So that's their business model. But they use also technology, which I found super interesting, because they t use technology to track how much they um, get supplied from the farmers and how much they sell to the storeholders. And by tracking that, um, they are able to create a profile for the farmers as well as for the storeholders. And if you have a profile, kind of, of transactions, mm -hmm. you're able to get microloans. And if you don't, like before, no, no farmer would get a microloan because nobody, the banks wouldn't know how yeah. much they make. What are your findings in terms of technology in Kenya and disrupting <laughs> the old way of doing business? Yeah. Um, what I found very interesting in terms of technology is that you have a mobile first um, approach. So almost every technology that I've seen, uh, every um, innovation that I've seen is based or is using to some extent mobile. So everything is connected to mobile. Yeah. And I found that, yeah, that is super cool because in Germany, for example, we don't even have mobile pay. We, we pay everything with cash. It's so old school. Um, another thing that I found interesting is that um, many people speak about blockchain, about AI, about drones, you know, all these new fancy technologies. But if you actually go to the field and talk to people uh, and talk to entrepreneurs, they're not necessarily using all these. For example, Sandy. Yeah. You know Sandy? Yeah. No, so they are the no, no, Uber. No. Oh, oh, yeah, the Piki Piki. The Piki yeah, Piki. The <laughs> motorbike, yeah. <laughs> Well, they're also using big trucks now to do oh. like big, big deliveries. Yeah. So it's a delivery company, f like the, they're using an Uber model, yeah. but for deliveries. Yeah, and our real problems, and we have technology that is working, so why should we use anything that's new and probably not working so yeah. well? So that was very interesting that actually when you are, yeah, when you're on the ground, it's not so much about all these fancy yeah. technologies. <laughs> um, maybe in the future. Any profound company that you, that you went to that were dealing with waste management? The most interesting case I saw was um, Mr. Green. Oh, Mr. Mr. Green, Green. seen on your yeah. Instagram page. <laughs> yes. Mr. Green is very interesting in terms of waste management because they work with the uh, informal waste pickers okay. in Nairobi. Yeah. And I mean, the waste pickers, I think they always existed. Yeah. Yeah. I just recently did a story on somebody called George and what George does, he works with the informal waste collectors mm -hmm. and he has given them pick up points. So he goes to them and picks whatever he needs to pick, pays them and then he goes or then he takes whatever he has pitched to the big boys now, like ah, probably okay. Mr. Green. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. So it's so, sort of a middleman in yeah. the garbage collection business and scrap metal. You'll be very heavy on scrap ah, metal. Okay. Really. Yeah, so Mr. Green, they focus on plastic waste mostly. So, and that's why I found it super interesting that here people, they, when they start a business or if they, um, if they innovate something, it's always out of their own experiences. Yeah. So they experience something and then they're like, okay, this is a challenge, but this is also an opportunity and we need to do something about it. And then they just go and do it. Yeah. It sounds like you want to move here already. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making chapatis? No. No? No. I, I love chapatis, so yeah. I would move here if you have chapatis. But when I make them, they're like tacos. My, my, ah, mine are horrible. Okay. And, nice. um, funny thing is, every time I was pregnant, I had a craving for chapati. <laughs> so you sit on the roadside when you walk in, there are people selling food on the mm. roadside. That was my spot. <laughs> Order online. Order online chapatis? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, is yeah. that a thing? Yeah. I didn't know. You oh, can. I didn't know. Yeah. Ah, now I'm almost <laughs> leaving. You should have told me. You can have that, oh. especially on a Sunday morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can just That's a dream. Chapati. Yeah, so you don't really have to. That's the thing, technology. Technology, yes. You don't yes. have to stress. And here's the beauty it's on your phone, everything. You don't have to get yeah. out of your bed and go on a computer. It's all on the phone, in yeah. The old school way. Yeah. You know, in future, you probably have to hold like a thing like this, a chapati board. Hey, I need two chapatis <laughs> delivered to my house. This is where I live. And it comes straight to you. True. Or probably a drone flies. A drone. A drone flies. Drops yeah. on your bed and then it leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A drone.